Hey everybody, it's Sean from The Good Dog, and we are back with Mr. Ernie. Ernie. Yeah, and we're jumping into e-collar, phase one, the down command. So, let's see what we get. Um, if you've done your prong homework, you should be a long ways towards the finish line of this not being a battle. Uh, a lot of folks struggle with the down, a lot of dogs don't like to do it, and I highly recommend that you do it with a prong collar. Um, you can also do it with a prong collar and food and, and use both pressure or both motivators to get the dog to do it. But, um, where was I going with that? Um, so yeah, so you can use both of those motivators to create a down. And sometimes what I'll do with really challenging guys is I'll have food in one hand, the prong in the other, and I'll like, I'll entice the dog with the food and I'll start like luring with that, but then I'll just add a teeny bit of prong pressure, teeny, teeny, teeny. But the food's like, once again, it's kind of the same concept as the e-collar and the prong. 90% e-collar, 10% prong. In this case, 90% food, 10% prong. And you start doing that and you do a bunch of those and then you start doing a little more prong pressure, a little more prong pressure, a little more, and you fade the food. Next thing you know, the dog's giving you a nice down with just prong pressure. So I know we didn't cover that, or I don't think we covered that in our prong video, but this is why you need to watch all the videos so you can get all the information. Another good trick if you're having problems with downs um, is to, here's, here's, here's a really good crafty tricky one, is to put your dog on like three dog beds, something incredibly comfortable, incredibly cushy, make sure that they know the sit command. I would do it with, if you're, if you're doing just leash and prong, fair enough, just leash and prong. If you're doing leash and prong and e-collar, fair enough, do it like that. But the whole goal is you put them on this cushiony, kingly bed, right? Three, like stack two, three beds, and then put them into a sit right? You got to have your sit already like squared away. The dog will sit there and then get like, God, this is comfortable. Boy, this is really nice. Boy, I'd like to lay down, but I really need to fight this. I really got to fight the good fight. And next thing you know, you'll see them like start to lay down. And as soon as you do, you're watching. And if you're just doing leash and prong, then you say down as soon as you start to see it. And you add tiniest bit of pressure. If you add too much, the dog's going to pop right up. I mean, I'm talking about a smidge, just like, just, just add a tiny bit. And if it's e-collar and, and prong that you're working with, if the dog starts to down, <clears throat> make sure you add a very low level, <clears throat> excuse me, a very low level on the e-collar to where it's just a hint, just a hint of whatever it is. And make sure you add the word. So your dog's on their cushiony three-layer bed. They're in their sit. And they start to like wobble and want to lay down. And as soon as you see them starting to go down, press and hold the button. And if you need to use the prong to give a little guidance, I'd be super careful with it because like I said, they'll jump right out. Oppositional reflex, they'll pop right out if, if you put too much on it. But if you're super soft and super sensitive and just be like, oh, it's best if you just lay down because this is really cushy. And as soon as they lay down, mark it with good, reward if you're using food, then say, let's go, move them off of it and put them immediately right back on place into a sit. And they're like, how'd we get here? And you're like, you're going to sit on the nice cushiony bed for a while. And then what you'll find is if you do the rep, if you do these in reps over and over again, your dog will eventually be like, okay, this is a lot of work down. And you get to start pairing the down with the dog doing the down because they're just like, this is so damn comfortable. I can't hold myself up anymore, but make sure here's the trick. As soon as they down, don't gloat and be like, great, we got the down and just let them stay there. As soon as they down, it's a, it's a psychological trick. As soon as they down, good, mark it, and then let's go, bring them right back, sit. They're like, I'm right back to where I was a second ago. Exactly. Now we'll work on the down some more. So that's another little trick for the down stuff if you need it. Now, that all said, hey bud, sleepy guy, let me wake him up a little bit. I'm going to 
show you guys once again how we do the initial stuff, which is always sit down, right? So it's gonna be a two piece, a two part uh, story, and then eventually it can just be down on its own. But right now, and, and you've, seen it, you've seen it already with Place that he knows how to do it, but we're, we're, we're not doing it on Place, we're doing it on a rug. So now we've changed the context, we've changed the surfaces, we've changed the way things look and feel to the dog. So you have to be ready to change and adjust to make sure the dog can succeed. So we're going to bring them up, put them into a sit, then we're gonna actually do the down. Uh, both are gonna involve e-collar, so press and hold for the sit. Good, mark it, food, and then down, and I'll show you how I'm gonna use the leash and then we'll work on that. We'll see how he's doing with it. And then maybe we'll start to move to the, uh, to the placemat. And if all goes well, whether tonight or tomorrow, we'll start to work on recalls off of the mat. So that's what's in store. So let's check it out. Let's see what this, this guy's got. You ready? You got anything under the hood? You got any more go-go juice? You got any more go-go juice? There you go. Come on, let's go. Here we go, come on. Okay. So we're going to do sit, which, which means that we have to obey all the rules that we just showed you, and then we're going to work on the down. And remember, like I showed you with the prong collar, I do the down, not with the dog next to me, not with a pulley system, but I do it facing the dog, and I do it with the leash in a nice J about a foot off the ground, and I say the command, and then I just add a tiny, nice, soft, bless you, tiny, soft, smooth pressure down, right? So you're welcome. So that's, that's the concept for this. So if it looks something different than what you've seen, if it doesn't look like this or anything, that's because I don't do it like that. So you have to go back and watch the prong collar videos. So let's see if we can jump into some, some sits and some downs and see how Ernie does. And if he doesn't do well, we will just take him outside and we'll beat him with a stick until he does better. You hear that? Okay, ready? Let's go. So we walk them on up. I'm going to pause. Sit. Good. Down. Good. <laughs> you did so great, bud. Great. So as soon as I let out the leash and move to this position, you if you're watching carefully, it almost looked like We've been just practicing while we weren't videoing, like we just edited, like cut that in. But I promise you, we didn't. What happened right there is that you saw a dog recognize a whole bunch of cues and then go, oh, that's the down, right? Because Sean isn't standing here like this and doing this around me. He went down and then he went like that. Dog notices the leash. If you think they don't, you're crazy. Dog notices that the leash got slack. Then I move like this. He's like, I know what this means. And he went straight into a down, got rewarded for it. Rock and roll. Rock and roll, buddy. Rock and roll and no belly rubs. It's not time for that yet. You got work to do. Go on, let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. All right. You're doing so good, bud. Doing so good, doing so good. Here's some more. Stay awake, stay awake, stay awake, stay awake, stay awake. We need some uh, Red Bull for this guy. You ready? Okay, here we go. Gonna walk up and I want you guys to watch. What I really want you to watch is, what I'll try and do this time, I'll see if I can shift it a little bit. I'll try and do the down and not move. And then I'll try and do the position into a, sorry, did I say that wrong? I'm gonna try and do the sit and not move and have him right in the sit position that he's used to, and then make a very distinct motion into the down with loosening the leash and moving away and see if we're getting, in fact, a really definitive kind of like, okay, uh, an observation of, okay, that's, that's the down, that's the down cue. When, when the leash goes like that and you move like that, that's the down cue. So let's check it out. Ready? Let's go, bud. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sit. Good. Check it out. I didn't even say anything. 
Now, I could have said something and told him down, but that was merely for your guy's benefit. What I wanted to show you was just how cues that you've done repeatedly set up to create an understanding for the dog of what your expectations are, of what the commands are. And even without a word, they end up becoming the visual cues for what you need to do. That was so damn crystal clear. Like I'm, I'm super proud. Like don't go to bed, get, get, get over here, come here. You did so good. <laughs> don't go to sleep just yet. So I want, I, I hope you guys saw that because he sat perfectly right next to me. And then as soon as I went like this and like this, the down happened perfectly. Like I, I, I couldn't be more proud of how he did that. And I honestly couldn't be more proud of the foundational work that we did because it proves the point of what I've been saying over and over and over again. If you want this stuff to work, do the foundation work that leads up to it to where the dog goes, all of this stuff, A equals B equals C equals D equals E, however dogs do math, and you go from there. Let's try it again. Let's go, bud. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, you ready? All right, this time I'll actually say the D-O-W-N. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. And ready, here we go. We're still at five, boom, boom, boom. March on out, make sure you pause. Sit, good. That's a boy, whoops, I got it. Now check it out. Down. Good. Now, I made a judgment call. I didn't even use the e-collar that time, but I would recommend that you guys do. I made a judgment call, like I said, because he's doing so good and I've done a shit ton of foundation work to make sure that he rocks any rolls. So, but for you guys, I would much rather that when you go to ask him to down, stay on the button and pattern, 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 pattern. So he understands the es escape training process. I know we won't have any issues, but it can be very easy for you guys to fall apart with that stuff. So I'm gonna walk around him, see what he does. Did you just tap? Nope. Did I tap one? When you down. Nope, I didn't even touch it. I sent it through my my brain to him. Good. That's a boy. And if people want to see me give the command with the pressure, I'll do it real quick like that. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This will be with leash press. This will be with e-collar pressure and sure, sure, sure. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Come on, come on, sleepy head. Ready? Here we go. So first, pause, sit, good. That's a boy. Down. Good. And that's how you do the first phase of e-collar down. And this is how you begin to prove it. It's really not that complicated. What gets complicated, what gets complicated is when people don't follow steps. What gets complicated is when people try and cut corners and they don't do all the foundational work. <laughs> All the, all the foundational work that leads up to this. The reason why I could walk up and just move my body in a certain way and move the leash in a certain way and create a command that I knew I was going to get is because I've done the foundation work and I've trained a gazillion dogs. So I know how they perceive body motion, leash, all this different stuff. And so I was able to leverage that to get him to do a fantastic job. So Ernie, you rocked and you rolled, even for a sleepy guy.
So that is e collar down with some proofing, phase one, and um, let's let's uh, shit. Let's move on to the next uh, the next video. Uh, the next video is going to be recall from place, and he's like, oh no. <laughs> the next the next command is going to be recall from place, and we'll be looking to put all the pieces together, which will be recall from one place just off of it like we did with the prong, and then recall onto another mat, and then we'll be looking for recall to place to down, recall to place to down, recall to place to down, pattern the heck out of that, and then that will eventually become something that you can stretch to whatever distance you want, and have your dog be able to recall to you whatever distance you need, and then, <laughs> And then, you all itchy bud? And then be able to stay in what, whatever spot you want them to stay in. So hopefully this all makes sense. And, and to be honest, like I, I really hope, <laughs> I really hope for all the folks out there that think that prong collar and e-collar stuff is some horrible, torturous, <laughs> take it easy over there torturous, abusive approach to training. I, I hope you actually spend the time watching these videos and see what this looks like and see that this is the furthest thing from hardcore, hard on the dog, abusive training. This is easy stuff with a ton of clarity, which means that the dog has all of this emotional certainty about what you're asking from them. And, and, and it, it's like, I, I, I can't imagine why somebody would want to do something that makes the dog appear happier, but is actually making a more anxious, frantic, nervous, unsure, hyped up dog. When you can just show them what you need help them to be calm, be relaxed, be in this great space, understand all the commands and, and still reward them and still have a great time with them. And then eventually when you want to let them out and like go crazy and do all the nutty fun stuff, it's all still there. It's just teach them the off switch. We're still working on that. But teach them the off switch and that way you get the best of both dogs. You get the dog that can have a blast and be fun and, and, and do all sorts of crazy, fun and, you know, doggy stuff. And then you can also get the dog that can just hang out when you've got family over and, um, or guests or you're doing work or whatever it might be. And your dog just hangs tight. And that's a dog that gets included in your life much more than the one that is raising hell and causing stress and causing anxiety and worrying you and gets put in a crate or locked away in a room or in a backyard. So hopefully that helps. All right, on to the next video.